Hi there, friends. Welcome back and welcome here for the first time if you're new. Um, I'm, my name is Aura. I am your crypto astrologer here to give you some crypto woo. But this video is going to be kind of um, straightforward about the uh, toxic cannibalistic businesses that have helped our economy wind up where it is now. This would have happened with or without COVID-19. COVID-19 is just the pin that popped the bubble of the unraveling that was already happening. So I'm going to go over a couple of these businesses and why they are serving to bring everything, consolidating the financial powers into smaller and smaller hands and how they cannibalize the industries that they went into. So let's start with um, this one. This is, um, I think this is Lyft. Is this Lyft? This is Lyft. So Lyft, and of course, its close cousin Uber, which also has Uber Eats, um, they cannibalized the, the um, taxi industry. And they forced all of the liability onto the driver. Now there are drivers who claim that they make a lot of money and stuff. However, one of the things that is left out of the equation for these drivers that you're not hearing about um, when you hear these numbers is that the drivers, they're given the opportunity to buy cars, right? So they're given the car buying opportunity. They lease these cars, very high prices, but they're responsible for all the wear and tear and maintenance on the car. So they're losing all the value of their vehicle, driving it for this company. So they basically, the companies like Lyft and Uber have offloaded all the liability onto the, um, the worker, okay? So what they did was they... And, and by doing, and while they did that, they also simultaneously um, were managing to um, put every taxi business out of business because they had sort of an unfair advantage on the market. And the reason that this worked is because they had such a high financing amount of money behind them that they could just buy market share. So they just got more and more and more people into this trap so that they would put out the businesses that were already existing that had a solid business plan, like that were actually based on real numbers, like taxi businesses. Now no one wants to get into a taxi. It's a dirty, smelly taxi. You know, nobody wants that. But instead, you'd rather get into your dirty, smelly Uber driver's car where he now has all the liability for the car. He is basically picking up the slack of the expenses that the taxi driver, taxi company paid to keep the car insured, keep the taxi insured and cleaned and maintained and like driven into the ground. So those companies, and then they all um, basically went public and they had bought up all this market share and then they pumped up their prices really. I mean, the prices got pumped up when they went public and then dropped really quickly. This happened with a number of companies. Here's another one. Let's look at another one that's very similar. That is WeWork, which was a big fiasco when they went public. So they did something similar with office space. So they basically cannibalized the office space industry. So people were no longer renting office spaces. They were renting these slots in this large WeWork, highly financed, um, deeply in debt company, where they put a ton of money into opening up these offices everywhere. And then they went into ICO and they crashed, you know, immediately. And by the way, their business sucks. They're not making any money. So they, they basically, I mean, and I've, I've been to iWork. I've actually used their spaces. They're, they're not, they're nice. They're pretty good. Um, but I feel like they don't really, you know, I mean, it is a pretty nice place to go and use as an office, but they, the way it worked was that it was not a financially sustainable system. They pumped billions of dollars. They put way too much money. I mean, probably not billions, but many millions into uh, building these offices everywhere. And they just didn't quite have enough customers and it wasn't quite profitable enough to really work. And their ICO did not succeed. So here's another one. And this one is really, really, um, really germane, really um, like very um, relevant to the current crisis that we're having financially. And this other one is Airbnb. This one's huge because we are all on lockdown. Nobody can travel. Nobody can go 
so look, they've got all this, you know, COVID issues because all these hosts, all these people who own Airbnb locations and properties don't have anybody coming to rent their spaces, right? So they're sitting vacant and they're not making money. And a lot of people leverage their home mortgages to buy Airbnb properties. So they're like super hosts and hosts and there's properties all over the world that you can go rent if you're in the market to travel. Well, we have a worldwide travel ban, so we can't go anywhere. So the question is really how long can these hosts survive this lean time? And are we going to be able to go back into business again where everyone's running out and taking vacations and everything is fabulous and no one's afraid of touching anything in some unknown person's home that they've shared with other people? I mean, do you think this business is coming back? I do not. Not anytime soon. So those people are going bankrupt. These people with their Airbnb, um, you know, they're going to lose their properties at the very least. A lot of these properties are going down. They're going to get, lo they're going to be lost. And also a lot of people who have these properties who've mortgaged their homes are also going to lose that income and then they have to pay back the loan. And so they're going to end up losing the, in the mortgage as well. So this is another housing crisis coming to fruition there. And also, by the way, so many people aren't working. So we have this massive number of population that is not um, paying their mortgage. And there are all these kind of laws that protect them. But basically what I'm going to tell you is that this all is going to be a, you know, S hitting the fan is going to happen within a year to two years. And all these things, I would say early 2021, you're going to see a whole domino effect of property values going down. And so WeWork also ties into that with the office space and the office location stuff. That's going to pull down. That's already it already stole a lot of business from office space, office leasing locations, unless, you know, people, you know, companies that were bigger than that, that were not like small startup individuals or small, you know, two to three company teams, team companies, they weren't renting spaces in a physical location. They were using shared space like we work. So those things, and by the way, those kind of startup companies, some of them are able to be a little bit more flexible. Actually, the smaller ones are more flexible than the bigger ones where they've got, they're, they're on the hook for all this office space, right? That they can't pay for because they can't run their, their professional business correctly. Their workers aren't even coming into the office, so they don't really need them. And, you know, you've got things like retail stores and all these things that cannot pay their rent. They're not going to be able to pay their um, their high mortgage payments or their rental payments on commercial properties. So you're going to see a big giant crashing of the commercial properties. This will be one of the bigger things that happens in the second stage of this collapse, second, third stage of this collapse. Th that's going to go on all the way through the third stage of the collapse. So you're going to see these big monsters start to fall. This has already happened. This was already happening last year, especially like luxury um, rent, rental spaces in New York and things like that, like very high-end department stores were going out of business. Um, I think Barney's New York went out of business, which is funny. I used to work there a long time ago. I'm not in New York. I worked with the one in, uh, in Beverly Hills, but it's, um, you know, those high-end places are going to lose their cookies, basically, because they can't, you know, with, with Barney's, it was a long story about how their, their rent went up, like, tripled, right? And they were already paying, like, $14 million a year, so it went up to, like, 45 It was insane. But it's New York, right? You can expect that in New York. However, this kind of thing happens in San Francisco also. So you're going to be seeing, um, and a lot of these luxury brands don't have people buying the way they were before. So you're going to see a lot of this coming down from the top, crashing down prices from the top where they have just been like, you know, if you could raise the price any higher, they just raised it and raised it and raised it in order to rake in the dollars on that high end luxury market. So what's going to happen is those are starting to collapse and they're going to come down and then the how the regular housing market is going to just fall all the way down to the ground. So the bottom line is this is not a time to be looking at properties. Um, it would be better to wait until these things start to happen and they will, they're going to start happening in 2021, but it could be going, it could, I mean, it's going to go for a long time and we're going to see the value of properties and houses 
evaporate like to such a degree the, uh, but the other side of this is no banks are going to be lending because the banks will have all been gutted by then as well so we're going to have no banks that have the capability of creating more debt because that's our problem is too much debt sucking all the money out of the system so the banks are not going to lend you so anything so getting property is going to prices will come way down to what people actually have in physical form the reason we got these really overinflated prices is because the mortgages could be overinflated because they could give people you know these 500 year loans i'm joking obviously they're not 500 years but they would just extend and extend and extend the length of these loans so that they could get more people in to buying the price so they could prep pump the price up right with all that all that um debt which isn't just debt it's debt and interest and compound interest which becomes you got something that's this big right you've got a you've got a a mortgage you got a rock or a piece of property right and it's this size and then you add debt to it and it gets to be this pig and then you add you know interest payments and then you like it just they, they just made it into this snowball of excessive fake value so it was like full of like puffiness like it was pumped pu pumped up and full of like hot air or um that's why they call it a bubble but also like yeast or um uh you know like a bubble you know, what am i thinking I'm like a marshmallow when it puffs up anyway it just got big and not real so then it all had to come it's all gonna have to come down to what its actual value is we haven't known the value of properties for decades so this is going to take us actually down to what that actually is and the way that people are going to be able to get properties at that time is going to be with hard valuable resources things that um you can trade for real that people want like silver like gold like um maybe a fruit tree like uh, of course cryptocurrencies the ones that are good so that's where we're at in sort of the bigger you know scope of things and that is you know i mean like airbnb is like <laughs> they're the worst they really did absolutely say almost single-handedly take down the housing market i mean the the property market the luxury like um you know uh vacation market that's what they did is because they just basically took it all for themselves they sucked it all up and then now these properties are all going to go down and of course who's going to be left standing but airbnb and they're going to go in probably and pick up a lot of these properties themselves because they have all that money which came from their vc people their um you know whatever money they got from the government because believe me these companies that had this kind of big money to soak up the entire market share of the entire industry that they stepped into they literally went in there to take over the industry to make sure there's nobody else to compete with them and so they have all this money so now they're going to be able to go in and buy these properties later and end up owning the whole industry completely this is how you get monolithic control this is how you end up with everything being centralized into the hands of a few players, right? The cabal, the Illuminati, the whatever you want to call them, they're the ones that are going to hold all the cards. And that's the point of this, is they're collapsing the system so they can go in and pick up all this. And in case you guys don't know, uh, Warren Buffett has been in cash for quite a while since before the uh, stock market started crashing and he has still been selling everything left and right still even as the stock market is making a fool's rally right now making a dead cat bounce so that's kind of where things stand so don't be surprised when you hear who has picked who, who's in the position to be buying property after property after property when no one else has any money so that's kind of where that stands. So anyway, I wanted to give you guys that quick um, overview, look at these cannibalized industries and how that is going to actually take things much further down than they are right now. And that's when the property values are going to come down. So this is why those of us who are savvy, who have seen what's coming, have been putting away silver and gold and cryptos are going to be in a brilliant position. But... You got to get from here to there, right? We got to get through the next year to two years. And do not think that the powers that be will not make us suffer <laughs> in order to make us give up everything we have, because that's the plan. That's the whole goal so that they have all the funds and they can go in and, and pick everything up at a song later on. So 
there you go. Um, that's why it's really good to have um, like junk silver so that you can get yourself through this transitional time and stuff like that so that you have something of value and things that you can trade during this kind of stretched out leg of the of the process. But at the other side, there's definitely some uh, great deals to be had on properties and that will be the time to be picking those things up. So that is it. And uh, thanks for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Make sure you like, share and subscribe. Talk to you guys later. Bye.